Thank you for joining this lesson. We're going to discuss physics paper two, number 13. The figure below shows an X-ray tube. So we can see the X-ray tube. In part one, name the part labeled C. The part labeled C, as indicated, is called the anode. Some other times learners will confuse between generally the anode and specifically the target. We have the target here labeled B. B is the target. Let me just name it now. Sometimes learners will fail to observe keenly. The target is attached to the anode. Therefore, the hard target, which is made of a different material from the, the bigger part of the anode, should not be confused with the anode. Now, in part two, the examiner is telling us to state the property of the material labeled B on the diagram, which makes it suitable for use in the X-ray tube. Therefore, in the X-ray tube, we have uh, the target now. I had already named it. Now the target is made of a certain material, which makes the target suitable for use in this X-ray tube. And uh, the material can either be the target is made of either molybdenum or tungsten. These are two possible metals which can be used as the target in the X-ray tube. But now the question is, state the property. So we are not stating the material for making part B. We are stating a property which makes it suitable. So the property which makes either molybdenum or tungsten suitable is that they have a high melting point. High melting point. This is the stating. There is now the explanation part. Maybe if the examiner now tells you to explain why tungsten is chosen. The high melting point enables this enables this enables a, the target to withstand the high temperatures. The high temperatures at the anode. Since most of the electrons, as you can see, this is a beam of electron, electron beam flowing from the cathode. It's the cathode. You have an electron beam flowing from there to the anode. Now, almost 99.5 of the energy of this electron beam is converted to heat energy with a very small percentage becoming X-rays, very small percentage like 0 0.5. Therefore, because a lot of heat is being generated at the anode, then we need a target to have a very high melting point to enable it to withstand the great temperatures. Why is C inclined at an angle of 45? Part C is the anode and it's made such that uh, it's inclining, not a uh, horizontal. So this is to ensure that the produced X-rays, rather to channel the X-rays to the window, to ensure that they are channeled to the window. This is called the window, where they are coming out through. So to ensure that once they are produced, they are channeled through the window, the anode is placed at a certain angle, 45 degrees for this matter. <clears throat> Part four, state the adjustment that can be made to vary the quality of X-rays and two, the quantity of the X-rays. For the quality of the X-rays, we need to vary the potential 
difference, the potential difference between the anode and the cathode. When the potential difference is, for example, increased, now the anode is made to be highly positive. And when it is highly positive, there will be a lot of acceleration of the produced electrons to the target. So electrons will be highly accelerated. That means they will possess a very high kinetic energy. They will hit the target at a very high speed. And the X-rays produced now will be hard X-rays or X-rays with a lot of energy, a very high frequency for that matter. Therefore, to increase the speed of produced electrons, which leads to increased kinetic energy of the produced X-rays, we can increase the potential difference between the anode and the cathode. If it is decreased, then the electrons produced will not be highly attracted. So they will move with a lesser speed. That means they will possess a lesser kinetic energy and hence the produced X-rays will have a lesser energy. All right, we have uh, the quantity of X-rays produced. So to vary the quantity of produced X-rays, then now the adjustment we make we adjust the current in the heater filament. We adjust the current in the heater filament. Of course, at the cathode, at the cathode. Remember, X-rays are being produced purely by thermionic emission. The unique emission is when current is passed through the cathode. The cathode is heated up. Electrons gain energy and they get dislodged from the surface of the cathode. Now, when current is increased, the heating effect increases and more electrons will be produced. Therefore, that means the number of X-rays to be produced will also be intense. So the quantity of X-rays can also be the intensity. The intensity of the X-rays. The density of the X-rays produced. That will be affected purely by the current in the eta filament. When the current is lowered, then the heating effect is lowered and hence fewer electrons emitted from the surface. We have a calculation here in part five. An X-ray tube has an accelerating potential of 100 kilovolts. Determine the maximum frequency of the X-rays produced. We should know that uh, the energy, okay, we are assuming that now all the energy in produced electrons is converted to X-rays 100% which is just an assumption because as we mentioned earlier, all the energy is not converted to X-rays. So we say that the energy of the X-rays is given by EV, electron charge times the potential difference. But again, the same, same energy is given by Planck's constant multiplied by frequency of the radiation. So this means energy is going to be when we take uh, 1.6 times 10 to the power of negative 19 and we multiply by 100 kilovolts, that means 100,000, then we're going to get energy as 1.6 multiplied by 10 to the power of negative 14 joules. Again, this energy now, 1.6 times 10 to the power of negative 14, is also given by Planck's constant, which is given there, 6.63 times 10 to the power of negative 34 multiplied by their known frequency now. So to remain with frequency, we divide the energy by 6.63, and this gives us 
times 10 to the power of 19 because it is frequency we talk about at hz in the next question we're having a in an x in an in a cro that is a the cathode ray oscilloscope waveform given below was displayed on this displayed on the screen when the sensitivity at the y plate was 10 volts per centimeter and time based setting at 20 milliseconds per centimeter determine part one the peak voltage for us to determine the peak voltage we're supposed to observe this wave and uh, as you can see this, that is the main position and we know that uh, the y plate is at a sensitivity of 10 volts per centimeter therefore we say peak voltage is usually given by the wire plate sensitivity multiplied by the number of divisions in the vertical displacement. Therefore, uh, the setting is at 10 volts per centimeter. So 10 volts per centimeter multiplied by from the mean position i'm having only one two two centimeters so the centimeters cancel and this gives us a peak voltage of exactly 20 volts therefore you just multiply the sensitivity is the number of divisions or rather centimeters because per centimeter we have 10 volts then for two centimeters the peak voltage is 20 and lastly the frequency of the signal for us to calculate the frequency of the signal then we consider the time base setting which is at 20 milliseconds per centimeter so what we're going to consider now is a complete oscillation in this waveform a complete oscillation is a uh, between two points which are in phase or other from crest to crest between two successive crests therefore or two successive troughs anyway but we don't have two troughs for the provided waves so a complete oscillation will begin from a crest to the next crest and that means within a complete cycle we have one one two three four four divisions or rather if we begin at a point like this we flow until we are on the same point and moving in the same direction that will mean at this point therefore again we can have one two three four so we have four divisions in a complete oscillation and per division they are 20 milliseconds therefore to get periodic time that is the time taken to cover a complete oscillation we're going to take the number of divisions in a complete oscillation that is four multiplied by now the time base setting which is 20 milliseconds so this will mean 80 milliseconds and this translates to when we divide 80 by a thousand you're going to get zero point zero point zero eight now seconds so after we've gotten periodic time t go now to frequency which is given by the reciprocal of periodic time so one divided by 0 0.08 this is going to give us when i compute one divided by 0 0.08 i'm going to get 12.5 adds so that is the frequency for the signal above 